Hello class, I'm going to go over the week 10 solutions. For question one, I was hoping that people would use these visuals to help a student or a person understand that the amounts two-thirds, four-sixths, and six-ninths of a whole all represent the same amount. <clears throat> Notice that in my drawing of the circles, I kept the shading in the exact same spots. In fact, I used my thirds here as anchors, I made them bolder in the subsequent drawings below. So to find six, I just took each third, cut them in half. All right, so there was a, a third there, and I cut that in half. I did that to each third. And then to get ninths, I took a third, which is right there, and cut them into th three pieces. And so you can see that uh, the shading is in the exact same position. Same thing is true over here. I used these bold uh, thirds as anchoring points, so you can see that the amount I shade is the same in each case. Question number two. Uh, I think most people did uh, pretty well with question number two. I don't remember uh, any issues. It was just a question as to who explained or justified their work uh, well and who did not. But uh, everyone did, did well on this one here. I think got the right numerical answers. I noticed I did not follow my own instructions right here. I said to, if you do have an improper fraction, write it as a mixed number as well. So I should probably have written this one as one and one six unit. And I, I like this task here of uh, how long is the gray and give me three different units, uh, unit fractions with different units. And this is where it's, it's helpful that we are gonna unitize three times. Or we have one length and that one length is half of a green. So you could say that a half is the same thing as, it's also a fourth of the blue, and it's also a seventh of the red. And so you get in a statement that looks like this, which at first, without units, you would say, this is a nonsense statement. These aren't the same amounts, but they all represent the same amount if you put the right units on them. Well, this issue is gonna come up again later. So this would be a half of the green, a quarter of the blue, and then a seventh of the red. If you put those units on there, then these all represent the same amounts. If you leave the units off, then uh, yes, I agree, it can be confusing. Uh, number three, I, I think everyone uh, did this one well. I did not follow my own instructions here though. And here's an improper fraction. I should say this is one and one fifth acres. And uh, yes, everyone did a, a fairly good job at keeping track, keeping distinct area versus length and width. I don't really have any other comments to say there, but these are the, the answers that I have. On this one here, there were a, a few groups that made some mistakes. I'll just do uh, some of this, not all of it. Let's do this a second row here. So we have uh, one way to do this is to think of everything in terms of those triangles. And so it's possible to see that we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of the triangles. And this shape, so this, this stands for one whole square meter. So one triangle is one ninth. And this shape here has a total of six of those triangles. So this shape here would be six copies of one ninth of this whole uh, square meter here. So we get essentially six ninths, which boils down to two thirds. Or you could also, instead of imagining those, imagining those in terms of, uh, you could do these diamonds as the units over here. What I mean is, there's going to be one diamond there, one diamond there, one diamond there. Oh, sorry, I'm not doing diamonds. I want to do the red things, these red trapezoids. So you could break this up into three equal parts. So each part is one third of a square meter, and this here is, is two of those. So two one thirds. So that's why you can say just a two thirds uh, square meters. So you don't always have to think of everything in terms of, you know, these smallest triangles. You can think of them in terms of larger pieces, too, a few different ways. Um, so this this shape here is, is exactly one-third 
of this shape here because we have one, two, three such pieces that make up one square unit. And this is just one of those, so one third. And the diamond is, if we, let's do the diamond in terms of the green rectangle. So I'm gonna, how many, or sorry, green triangles. How many green triangles are in here? Well, there's six right there, seven, eight, nine. So each, each little uh, triangle is one ninth. And this blue diamond thing here is two of them. So this would be uh, two ninths of a meter. And of course, this triangle here is exactly one half of that, so just one ninth. Now, a couple things you should notice in your with all your numbers here when all is said and done. Notice that uh, to go from the yellow to the red, that the red is exactly one half of that. So whatever number you have here, you should have half that number here. Two thirds and half of two thirds is one third. Of course, at this point, we haven't learned how to do fractions of fractions, multiply them, but I think all of you already know how to do that in the first place, even though we haven't formally talked about it. But uh, here's three halves, and half of three halves will be three-fourths, etc. Whatever number you have in the first column, the number in the second column should be one-half of it. Uh, you see a, a similar, or look, a relationship between this and this. The uh, yellow can be thought of as three blues. So the blue answer should be one third of the yellow answer. So in other words, whatever answer you have in the first column, divide it by three, you, or do a third of it, you should have that answer in the third column. And uh, finally, another uh, that same relationship is between uh, this entry and this entry, because the green is one third of the red, or you can say the green is one half of the blue, so you'll notice that whatever you have here, do half of it should be the answer you have in the fourth column. So the fourth column is one half of whatever's in the third column. So different, different things to think about um, when you get all these answers. But here are the answers I got. You can pause the video and compare them with your own work if you'd like. Uh, this one here, uh, everyone did parts five or part one and two. The first two questions here are uh, pretty well. I, I do wish to see people being a little more careful and trying to make their pieces look more even. Like if you have a bar and you want to cut that into four, some people do one, two, and like, oh, I need to make that three, four. Well, that actually kind of looks kind of nice. But sometimes people are off at the start, so they'll have a bar, and they'll say, okay, one, two, oh, and I need to go three, four. But now look how long that is compared to how long that is. And when it's obviously in error, then do your best to redraw it. Don't just stick with a sloppy drawing, because it makes me think that you don't believe that the pieces have to be the same size when you make them obviously different sizes. Uh, the key that I was looking for in this third one here, everyone got this one right eventually, and I'm not entirely sure how the, how you knew where to put all these little hash marks when you did this, but when you want to break up this line into two and two thirds, the best way to really uh, do that is to write two and two thirds as eight thirds. So this represents eight of something. So to break up something into eight pieces, let's say we have a line segment, I want to break into eight pieces, Instead of just trying to guess and check and hope that you get to eight, that can you have to may have to redo that a bunch of times. Do your best to cut it in half. Like look at where roughly a half, and then cut each half in half, and that creates uh, four pieces. And then cut each of those halves in halves. And here's a, a good way to cut something into eight pieces. So that's definitely how you wanted to uh, begin this problem here. I'm not sure if I think only one group specified that that's what they were doing. All the other groups. They did stuff without telling me how they knew how to break this up. And anyway, so this represents eight thirds. Therefore, each of these is just one third. And you put three thirds together and you get a whole mile. And you can clearly see the, I, I did the, the longer hash marks to separate the miles as well. So we have one mile, two miles, and then here's two more thirds. So two and two thirds. On um, question number six, the... Uh, common, let's do the common new, uh, denominator approach. So for this first one here, I multiplied the top and bottom each by seven. When you, when you change a fraction this way into a, an equivalent fraction, I want you to put the times and times both in the top and bottom. Do not be lazy and do this. Don't say seven times that and that means you do seven times that and seven times that. This is bad notation because uh, when we learn fraction, numbers times fractions, when you do something like this, that 7 will only multiply to the 5. So you just have a conflicting notation. 
be very clear and say seven dot and seven dot for both of those when you when you write this down and how you're changing these. Anyway, once you have a, the same denominator, then you can just compare the numerators because one eighty fourth of a second is the same. So if you have thirty six of them compared to only thirty five of them, then thirty six of these equal of these same size pieces is more than thirty five of those same pieces. Um, for the common numerator approach, I multiplied uh, the first fraction by 3 over 3. Essentially, multiply the top and bottom each by 3. And over here, I multiply the top and bottom each by 5. And now I have the same numerator. So they have the same number of pieces. Each of these is 15 pieces. But the question really is, which piece is, uh, when you look at the unit fractions, 1 35th and 1 36th, which one is more? Well, 1 35th is more because that's like taking one and sharing it with 35 people. This is sharing it with more people, so each share is less. Uh, 35, breaking a, a one unit into 35 pieces produces larger pieces than breaking it into 36 equal pieces. So if you have uh, a larger piece here than you do there, but then you do the same number of pieces of each, then obviously that the uh, larger pieces will, will win. If 15 larger pieces is more than 15 smaller pieces. Uh, some people strangely said they, they confirmed that 3 sevenths was more than 5 twelfths, but then they said that uh, this one here took more time, which I thought was an interesting conclusion to make. Something was not right there in their thinking. Number, uh, the second one here, you weren't allowed to use common numerators or denominators. Uh, I did use this reasoning, though, that we have 1 16th is more than 1 17th, because if you break something up into 16 shares, each share is more than when you do the same thing but to 17 shares. Some people tried to draw, uh, you know, 16, they drew 16, but then they drew another one and they had 17. This is bad because these don't have the same length, and they should be referring to the same unit, which is a second, or, sorry, a kilogram. So you should start with the exact same length, break one of them into 16 and the other into 17, and then compare the size of each of one piece of each partition. But you definitely don't want to draw two rectangles that are different lengths, which several people did. And, um, okay, so if this is a larger piece than that, and then I have seven of them compared to six, this is a double, these are two different comparisons that lead to the same conclusion. They, they compound, uh, they both contribute to the fact that 7 sixteenths is more than 6 seventeenths because we have more larger pieces when we have 7 sixteenths. And with 6 seventeenths, we have fewer and smaller pieces. All right, so if I take a, a larger piece and, and I do more of those, then I take a smaller piece and do less of those, clearly the more larger pieces will be, will be uh, total to, to more in the end. And I did this last one here by using a benchmark of one half. I saw that 11 24 was less than a half, but 17 20, 17 30 seconds was more than a half. Therefore, 17 30 seconds of a liter is more uh, than 11 24 of a liter. Now, number seven. Uh, seven was an interesting one. Um, I, made it, I made similar comments on a lot of people's work because technically what Lilla said uh, can be right. A lot of you just said, oh, it's wrong, because the last thing she said is wrong. But maybe what she said, she's not putting the units on there. Maybe she meant to say that one-third of the uh, blue, which is, right, this, this green one right here is one-third of this blue one. That one-third of the blue is more than one-half of the purple. Now, you have to be very careful when you're when you're working with what people write and what they say. Sometimes they don't write and say as clearly as they're thinking. If uh, Lily, if Lilo was thinking one-third of the blue is more than one-half of the purple, then that is totally correct. And you'd have to press her on that and say, what do you mean? One-third of what? You, you, sh you should never really get away with talking about fractions without putting units on them. And as teachers, when you move forward, you should really have a high standard with fractions and insist that they always put units on them in their writing and in their speech. So don't just say one third is greater than one half because it really depends what the units are. 
If they're the same unit, then yes, one third of a unit is more than, sorry, is less than one half of a unit, then her statement would be wrong if we are assuming the same units. All right, this, this is the same issue as uh, if I say, hey, what's larger, two or three? Almost everyone will say three is larger, but it's just because they're assuming that we're referring to the same thing, three units compared to two units. But what if I said, um, what if I put hours here and minutes over here? Now I say which one's longer. Now you say two is more than three because two hours is more than three minutes as far as time is concerned. So units can totally change your intuitions and when you simply blankly state that three is bigger than two, you should always specify that you're assuming that the units are the same. So whatever unit you put here, you put the same unit there. Then you can conclude that three is more than two. You just gotta be careful here. Um, before you say that what someone says is wrong, insist they put units on their numbers and then you can judge whether or not you think they are right or wrong. Uh, so, Let's look at fractions. I mean, if I were to say, hey, which fraction is more, one half or, or one third? I think almost everyone would just point to the one half and say one half is more than a third, and they would draw a little picture, right? You know, cut it in half is more than if you cut it in thirds. These are horrible pictures, but you get the idea. And they would justify it that way. But that's assuming that uh, their units, they're referring to the same whole. So if I say one third of a unit, and then I say one half of the same unit, and now I say which one's more, then you can clearly say one half is more than a third. But if I say here's a third of a unit, and here's a half of a different unit, and I say which one's more, we have no way to determine this unless you can know how these units compare to each other. right? Because in, in Lilla's work, if she had said one third of the blue and one half of the purple, and she's thinking about length, which one's longer? Yes, the one third is one third of the blue is more than one half of the purple. So when you put different units on there, your, in, your inequalities might go the other direction. So let this be a lesson moving forward. Do not let yourself and do not let your students ever uh, work with fractions or numbers, really for that matter, without units. Because uh, there's a lot of assumptions that's done in mathematics that assumes that units are you know, in compliance with some sort of uh, standard. But in the minds of a student, they may not be thinking the way you think they should be thinking. And you want them to be clear by putting units on numbers. And this is here is just illustrating this idea. Right? One third of the blue is more than a half of the purple. That's true. But as soon as I put the same unit on both of these, right, whatever unit you put on there, then uh, there's a typo here. Then one half will definitely be more than a third, assuming they're referring to the same thing. Okay, um, let's look at the last one here. Draw a rectangle that represents one third of a year. My rectangle I drew is the one that's in blue. You know, we're so used to breaking up that way, but you can also break it up into rows. And so here's a long skinny blue rectangle. And then here's five thirds, where you could do five thirds this way. Uh, now, suppose it takes you five years to earn three associate's degrees. So I've drawn five rectangles here that represent five years. And there's lots of ways to figure out how long it's gonna take to uh, get one degree. Uh, you could start breaking up, if I color code, you could say, okay, well, one degree is going to take up this one, right? A, a different degree is going to take up that one, and I'm going to color code by degree. And then a, a th my third degree is going to take up that one, so we got to split up the other uh, two years. And there's a couple ways of doing this. You could do, uh, I'm going to split the years right with the bars that go all the way through. So you could split each of these into, into thirds and share them separately. So I could say, okay, um, here's some green pieces for the uh, third degree. Here's some red pieces for the first degree. And here are the orange pieces for the first degree. And so when you say, okay, put all the orange together, you get one and two thirds. Put all the red together, you get one and two thirds. And put all the green together, you get one and two thirds. That's one way to, to do this. When there's lots of ways. You could, instead of You instead of uh, splitting up only the last two years into pieces, you could. Let me see. I don't want to do this. Do this for each year, right? 
And this is the way that's going to be helpful uh, in just a moment. So if I take each year and split it into three pieces, and then I combine right all of the oranges together, you're going to get one and one and two thirds. And you put all the oranges together. Put all the greens together, you get the same amount. Put all the reds together, you're going to get the same amount. I like this way of thinking about it because it helps you understand that when you do five divided by three, you could instead just do one divided by three and then do five of those. Right, so we were trying to split these five years into three equal groups, which corresponded to the three degrees. But instead, I'm going to do it by taking one year and splitting it into three groups and getting an amount, which is what I shaded here in orange, but then doing five of those to reconstruct how much time it takes for the first degree. And so when you say, okay, we'll just do five copies of one divided by three, well, one divided by three could be written as one third, and you're doing five copies of one third. So this helps, this way of thinking helps me realize that if I take five units and divide that into three groups, I get the same amount as if I do a third of a unit and then do five copies of that. Right, there are two different ways to arrive at the same conclusion. Okay, and that's all I intend to say for this.